Hello, this is Kevin Kalmus, CEO of Nested Knowledge, here to show you how to use our literature search tools in Autolit. Uh, you can see here that I've created a fresh nest, and if you're going to build out a search strategy, I'd actually recommend that you start by editing the protocol, entering your full search strategy, using your research question, using the Pico framework, but strategic advice on building a good search is already covered in our free literature review course uh, from our about page. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the mechanics of actually adding that search to your nest. So from here, I'm going to jump over to the literature search page and to add a search, either one that you're going to run automatically uh, or that one that you're going to import uh, using a RIS or similar bibliographic file, click add search in the upper left hand corner. Uh, for automatic searches, we support the search engines of PubMed, Europe PMC, Directory of Open Access Journals, and clinicaltrials.gov. So these are searches that you can run automatically and set a repeat cycle. For any other uh, database of interest, you'll need to cr create your search on that database. So say for Embase, you'll need to go to Embase, run your search, bring back a RIS file, and upload it here, identify your um, your search engine of interest and import directly. Uh, the only major difference between the records that are brought in automatically and those that you bring in via file import is that you cannot automatically set an update cycle for file import. Uh, but let's say that we're going to create a uh, search using automatic search on PubMed. Um, I should note that once I've selected a search engine, I will get specific guidance on how to build out a search on that uh, database of interest. All I need to do is click out and it'll bring me to that guidance on the wiki. But I can just start entering terms. Let's say that I want to do a search on basilar artery stroke, the topic of our, of our uh, literature review course. I can just enter in basilar and stroke and some interventions of interest. And once I've entered those, you can see at the bottom, it tells me how many records I'm going to uh, bring back. And we have the rule of thumb recommendation that you, when using nested knowledge, you should generally start with a relatively small search that will help you uh, drill down on the underlying records and figure out if they are actually relevant. And then you can always add more searches in the future. So we really recommend bringing back fewer than 200 results with your initial search so that you can run some preliminary screening and figure out if you're on topic and you can always layer on more searches in the future. But for the mechanics of this, I enter my uh, Boolean query. I select my uh, engine of interest. I can add notes. These are just notes to myself or to any other uh, Nest user in the future. So I can note preliminary search for basal or artery stroke. Um, and then I can set a repeat cycle. This can be never, daily, weekly, or monthly. For this, let's set monthly. And I can hit add. Uh, since this is an API-based search, it can take a fair amount of time to pull back those records, uh, and that's proportional to how many records I'm pulling back. For PubMed, I can bring back up to 10,000 results in a single search, though we don't recommend uh, setting yourself up for 10,000 records worth of screening. Uh, similarly, for clinicaltrials.gov and Europe PMC, you can bring back 10, 000, up to 10,000 records at a time, and for uh, DOAGE, you can bring back up to 1,000. As you can see, once complete, it will track uh, uh, for all of posterity the terms that I used, the search engine. I can see or adjust the, the repeat cycle. I can also rerun it manually. And I can also see a full history of this, including the breakout of, uh, of terms. So uh, here I can see that stroke was actually broken out into the mesh underlying term on PubMed, as well as stroke as a general search term. I can see my note. And I can, of course, see the execution history where it shows me how many records were brought back um, with each uh, execution of this search. If I've added multiple searches, I can also use our intersections tool, which shows you overlap between your different searches. Obviously here we can only see one, but if I were to layer on further searches, the intersections tool would help me understand how much am I bringing back the exact same records versus bringing back new records uh, uh, that will be added to the nest rather than deduplicated out. Um, for, uh, uh, for search building, I'd also recommend that you explore. Uh, so if you want assistance in building out your search, you should come into our search exploration page and uh, you can build out your, your query without knowing Boolean logic. So I could add, you know, Basler um, and stroke as population terms. I can add some interventions of interest. And I can use the groupings tool 
to uh, to build out my parentheticals and you know my ands and my ors without actually entering in the Boolean logic. Once I've built out my search, I hit update exploration records, and it will actually bring back a preliminary search that will populate the uh, the AI recommendations that you can see below here. So I run that, and as soon as it is done, I hide the detail, and then I can actually explore the different population intervention and outcome terms that were brought back from this search. If I want to add them, say that I wanted to add acute basilar artery occlusion as a population term, I can simply click on it. Um, I will see the element. Uh, I will see what type of term it is and then hit add. And then of course I can go up and manipulate those in the future. If the term has a mesh definition uh, in PubMed, I can also see that mesh definition. And if I add this as a search term, uh, we will automatically get uh, term mapping onto that mesh uh, subheading of interest. Once I've completed this, I can examine the actual uh, logic of this query. So I run over to Query Builder, I auto generate, and it will show me the exact query that I will be running uh, once I complete this preliminary search step. I can test it on PubMed to see how many results it will bring back. But of course, my final step will be to uh, finalize the query, select a search engine of interest, and then create that literature search, which will bring me back over to the search page and uh, allow me to set a schedule uh, and, and run this search so that it can be layered on top of that which I've already created. Once I have run any search, it will uh, show that search is completion in this progress bar in the upper left-hand corner, and it will also automatically populate both our duplicate review. So once I've run multiple searches, I can examine the uh, any search overlap, and then we'll also populate screening with each unique record that will now need to move forward uh, into the inclusion or exclusion in the nest. Uh, to do so, I'll of course have to configure screening, and I recommend that you run forward to our screening video to learn about the next steps following search. Lastly, uh, I'll note, and this is covered in another video, but you can use uh, not just our search, but also use individual record addition, uh, either via PMID or DOI, using metadata, uh, by uploading PDFs, or of course, you can create searches uh, that are, that are uh, run via file import rather than automatically via API. Mm -hmm.